on October 16, 2007, ABC Radio Networks appointed Dave Van Dyke to Vice President Affiliate Relations. There's no doubt that Dave is the person that can help move our business forward. He has a unique perspective and experience in radio. He's been on air, managed several of the best stations in the country, and consulted a lot more of them, says TJ Lambert, Senior Vice President. He knows what station management needs to accomplish, and he gets the background to help them choose the best programming to reach those goals. Well, with that in mind, he's chosen Fame Games. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's traveled all the way here from Dallas, Texas to be with us today just to be sure we're not a bunch of ex-convicts. Welcome to the show, Dave. Is it everything you ever expected? Oh, uh, I love you guys. I've known you for only a few months via email and phone, but you're the real thing. You're the real deal. <laughs> Ooh, pinch me. Oh, I am real. <laughs> you know, we've got some hard-hitting questions for you, so if it's all right with you, we're going to just jump right in. Go. Okay. Large stations, whether owned by Clear Channel, in the last couple of years they're owned by someone else, now or 30 years ago, are impossible for small indies to get spins on. And that's from Brian Farish Radio Promotions at RadioMedia.com. Question one. Never mind the why. Let's focus on now. In light of ABC Radio Network's partnering with an all-indie music radio show, in historic terms, just how big is a move like this for the independent artist? What does this mean in real, specific terms? Well, this is huge because what we're doing is we're presenting the show in its total form to radio stations in big and small markets across the U.S., and these songs will be exposed. And so it's a monumental movement in the fact that we're exposing this music in a way that has never been done before. And so, yes, I think it's very likely that there will be an impact, uh, and I think the, the wave will continue as more and more stations adopt the show and want it. When you first heard the demo, were you surprised at the quality of the music? And it's only gotten better, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, initially I heard a demo six months ago, and it's really only gotten better. So it's amazing to me that you're, you're getting that kind of response and that there actually is a tremendous amount of unheard, untapped talent. That's one of the things that I think has attracted me to the show. I like it. Question two. This is from Monday, August 6, 2007. The Radio Airplay Debate. I wonder if you'll recognize this. Seems the music industry has forgotten the partnership years, when radio and records virtually changed the way music was consumed. Have you got a beef with the major record labels? Because that's from your blog, Navigate the Future. Yes, I do. Good! <laughs> yes! He's our man! No, I, I, I think that, uh, and I know, I know something about it simply because of the research uh, relationship in my former uh, work that I've done some, with some record labels. I understand how closed-minded they are, and it's, it's primarily a, a function of the way they do business and the way they have to generate what they, have, they feel are popular songs. But um, unfortunately, many of the people in the business business today have been there too long and they feel they know what's uh, appealing to the kids mm -hmm. and they're uh, a bit off base at times and so a show like this can make an ex expression to many people and that's one of the things I'm hoping for is that it will force radio to force the record labels to get their heads on straight. What I like about, about um, something, one of the first conversations we had with yourself and also Carl Anderson, who's Vice President of Programming, was that you said it's your show is like building hits from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is really the beauty of it. It's the people saying, this is what we want, and they kind of know which way the wind is blowing. And hopefully this will be a program that will enable uh, radio programmers around the world to really provide what the audience is wanting, as opposed to the other way around. It's really exciting for the independent artist, because here you can be sitting in Australia somewhere in Mission Beach or you can be up in the, the far reaches of Canada and you can submit your song but still break through. I think that's a phenomenal opportunity and that's what makes it so big. Everybody has a chance. That's what's exciting. And you can hear the rest of this interview with Dave Van Dyke from ABC Radio Networks next week in the Fame Games Final. Last week was an amazing and blow your mind kind of week when we met in person for the first time. The guy behind our newly formed partnership with ABC Radio Networks. This is a guy helping indie music break through on major network radio and get the kind of airplay that up to now has never before been available to an indie. We are pleased to play for you now the second part of our in-house interview with Dave Van Dyke, Vice President of ABC Radio Networks. Enjoy. Now, we as indies, we really want to learn from this. We really want to make sure that we don't make the same mistakes that the industry has been making for the last 20, 30 years. What would you say we could do? Well, first, you have to submit your songs to this show. <laughs> yeah, man! <clears throat> because
because this is the, I think, the greatest platform, uh, at least currently. And uh, I do believe with the success of this show, you're going to see copycats. Mm. Just like you've seen copycats of American Idol uh, around the world, uh, you'll see copycats of this program, which is only good, yeah, yeah. if you understand. And, because uh, we'll license their asses. <laughs> once the, one, this show is also have an educational uh, potential because uh, the production value I've heard on these songs here really shows that there are people who know how to do this. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, very important. You've asked, what can they do? They have to write. Obviously, it's in the writing. There, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, there's got to be a, a hook for radio uh, around the world, but especially in America, a hook in, in the music for the music to be appealing uh, and for it to uh, sustain multiple airplays. And uh, the more the more familiar sounding it, it appears to be, I think the more audiences psychologically will like it. So I think those are key points to it. And um, and, and obviously, the, uh, the answer to being exposed properly is is to have uh, the right kind of music and the right kind of song, the right kind of writing and the production that we're hearing on this show. Fantastic. I have one more question for you. It's um, an, uh, it's kind of a threefold question, so you have to forgive me for this one, but I have a very complex mind. <laughs> Don't shake your head, Graham. Today's theme, today's theme was plucked from your list to me last week of your top five all-time favorite tracks. You said, number one, Starship Trooper from Yes. Two, Golden Slumbers by The Beatles. Three, Jammin', Bob Marley. Four, Thunder Road, Bruce Springsteen. You're nodding. <laughs> and five, Blitzkrieg Bop from the Ramones. The question, you used to be a PD, yeah? Yes. Let's ponder. If these tracks paint a picture of your taste in music, which is quite eclectic, Mm -hmm. Would it be such a leap to say that other PDs might also have eclectic tastes in music? I would generally? definitely. Would it then follow that PDs in general are hungry to discover some new music with little quirks and surprises? Perhaps. I think it's a mistake, perhaps, for you to think that uh, all program directors are musically uh, interested in a wide berth of music. Sometimes it's just a job. Can we beat them? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, exposure to this kind of music and this qu this much quality, I think, can open a lot of eyes. All right, let's talk about the PD directors who do have eclectic taste in music, who are maybe, you know, a little bit more like you. If these tracks paint a picture of that musical taste, what kind of taste does typical, saturated, top 40 radio leave in their mouth then? What that, in their, in their mouth? Yeah, what taste does it leave in their mouth? I think um, they uh, generally feel it's fairly narrow, very narrow, and uh, perhaps uh, like some of the music that they play but again it's a job uh, and uh, frankly they are so busy many of the pro program directors in America have so much work to do they oversee several radio stations that I don't think they think about mu the music as much as they used to and uh, that's why I know that's another reason this show will be important because it will force them to understand what's out there because now they don't have the time to listen to the music like we used to when I was programming I used to sit in a studio with a bunch of people just about like you guys and we would listen to all the records that came out that week and we'd all sit there and pick the songs that we liked and thought was right for this Sounds week's play. Like fun. And, and I think that this show has the potential to generate a format mm -hmm. much like that, where we pick music from all the great stuff we hear on Fame Games and create a, a playlist. You know what we got to do? we got to get all our indie friends together. we got a lot of indie artists in this community. There's like 10 million of them online. We get a group of them and we go out and we do like program director massages. We go to certain stations, do a little tour. Help them out. If they're busy, they're stressed out, you know, we'll detox them completely we'll bring some incense sticks we'll have Graham do the old one-two massage on them <laughs> what do you think hmm. I think that's a brilliant idea what about you I, I don't like stress seriously I, stressed out. I think there's a potential for fame games to have some component of a, an advisory role for radio stations that will grow out of this movement fantastic that's all we have time to discuss right now but hold on to your knickers we're going to conclude this topic at the end of the show thank you so much for that interview Dave it was fantastic. My pleasure. Continued success to you all. Thank you.